We are in the second week of this series called Carols. And as we look at different beloved carols from throughout time, I hope that you will begin to hear something new. Uh, A truth, perhaps, in each song that God has placed in the very lyrics of those songs. Today, in week two, uh, we're going to be looking at a carol we sung just a few minutes ago, O Come All Ye Faithful. Now, it was originally written in Latin, if you didn't know that, and it was given the title of Adestus Fidelis. And it was written by John Francis Wade, who was an 18th century hymnist. And it was translated then into English in 1841 by a guy by the name of Frederick Oakley. And that's where the English name of O Come All Ye Faithful came from. Now this is a a carol that of course has stood the test of time. It's been sung for a couple hundred years now at this point. And so I hope right now you will really enjoy it as I sing a cappella in Latin for you. You weren't so excited about that. We want you to enjoy your church experience here so that won't happen, okay? I won't sing it solo. But uh, maybe, maybe you were a little bit like me as we were singing it. And when you hear the song and you think of the words, when you think of the lyrics, um, the lyrics of some of these Christmas songs can almost be a little daunting at times. A, a, a little, ooh, wow, there's a whole lot there. And, and when you hear that, that, that line in O Come All Ye Faithful, that says, O Come All Ye Faithful, Joyful. And triumphant, right? Now when you sing that, you go, well, that's a kind of high bar. I mean, do I feel joyful? Do I feel triumphant? Because I don't know if you're like me, but I think many times some of us during the Christmas season, we can feel anything but joyful and triumphant, right? I mean, we try to put a good face on it. We try to smile. Try to pretend everything's going great. But sometimes we're just faking it. In fact, many times I think during this Christmas season, rather than joyful and triumphant, we're feeling defeated or depressed or uh, doubtful, right? You ever feel that? Well, maybe it's in just the faithful side of things. Maybe it's, you know, you know that God has called you to do something, to be something, to be somebody, to, to, to pursue this or to live this or to show this to the world. And as you're trying to do that, you're like, oh man, God, I mean, did you really, really call me, me to do this? And you feel like you're just kind of struggling in that faith walk, right? Struggling maybe with a faith issue or, or maybe some sort of faith trial in your life. Something to cause questions or or struggles or doubts. We can all sometimes find ourselves in that place, and sometimes we feel that way during Christmas, don't we? Maybe you struggle with that triumphant side of things, right? Triumphant isn't a word we use a whole lot in this day and age, is it? But we do sometimes feel more defeated than triumphant, don't we? I mean, and he gets to the end of the month and we're looking at our finances and we're like, ho, 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 thought I'd be in a better position than this, right? How did I get here with that little left? I just, I don't feel triumphant anymore, right? Or, or maybe you're just like, Man, I thought after 30 years of marriage, it would be better, or it would be different, or it would be easier. Right? I mean, I figured after 30 years, we'd have this thing figured out. And you thought maybe you'd be at a different place. And you're looking at each other going, how did we get here? And you can kind of feel that sense of defeat in your life. Maybe it's a joyful side of things. You ever struggle with that? I don't know if you're like me. But man, like that, joy can get sucked out of the room pretty quickly for me. I was thinking about this yesterday, actually. We went over to Brainerd and we were shopping. I don't do much shopping. Amazon is a godsend. Um, I just love Amazon. It, It saves me a lot of pain. But anybody who goes shopping this time of year, right? 
you know that it can be filled with trials, tribulations, and temptations, right? I mean, I was standing in line at Costco yesterday thinking about calling and ordering delivery pizza. <laughs> it was that long. I mean, my deal is, and oh, I just, I hate checkouts. I really do. I've, I've talked about this before, but I hate checkouts. I mean, I get, I get there. I'm surveying the land, right? Which, who's got more things? Who's got more kids? Who's got more people in that line? I'm okay with more people if it's less stuff. You know, I'm like trying to figure this out. And, and Costco's deceiving because they got carts the size of this table. So you're not exactly sure what's in some of them, right? And you don't know if it's like one thing to scan or a hundred things to scan. So you can hit the jackpot and have a full cart, but it's like three things. But you're like trying to figure this out, right? And I'm agonizing as I'm standing there. Which, which line do I get in? Because I don't want to get in the wrong line. So I finally, I pick my line and then bam, out comes a checkbook. Then they can't find a pen. And where are my glasses? And what is the date? Right? And then you go to tear it out, and it rips in half, and they got to start all over again. Oh. Now I'm entering the danger zone where I have to remind myself I'm a pastor. Seriously. The other one that catches me occasionally, I don't mean this to be sexist, but it's the coupon lady. Right? Not the coupon guy. Because men... We use one coupon at a time. Has any man ever used more than one coupon other than me? I use lots of coupons. We don't. It's like asking for directions. We don't. It's the coupon lady, right? You think, you think she's got like six things, but then she pulls out the binder. Oh my goodness. But like I said, I am a coupon person. When we first got married, I was a coupon ninja. We would have gone hungry, I think, when we first got married if I didn't know how to use coupons. So I use coupons. Sorry, folks, if you're in line behind me. I'm my own nightmare. That's the truth. Or, or the other one that gets me, like, that person has picked up the one item in the store that doesn't have a barcode. And they're, they're, on, they're on there going, eh, somebody from produce, can you go look this up? And you're like, there's nobody in produce. I was there for 20 minutes and didn't see another soul. Nobody's going to go look up an avocado. <sighs> Man. You're starting to feel my frustration, aren't you? And like that, my joy is gone. Maybe you can feel that way sometimes at Christmas. Probably not about grocery shopping, but something. And we find ourselves weary. And, and something in life has robbed and stolen our joy. And we just find ourselves at Christmas time not feeling joyful like the song says we should. And so for me, as I, as I look at the song, I begin to ask the question, who is it Jesus is calling to then? And I want to look at that today. If you're taking notes, first person that Jesus really calls to is that one I was just kind of talking about. Jesus calls to the weary and the burdened. We see this in Matthew 11, where Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Right? So, so the first group of people Jesus calls to is the weary and the burdened. And the second thing is, if you're taking notes, Jesus calls to the sinner. Matthew 9. The Bible says this. On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. You see, it's... Almost like you could rewrite this song a little bit and have it say, O come, all ye sinners, right? Ye weary and the burdened. But it's not as catchy. And I don't have any idea how that works in Latin either. But when Jesus calls, he may call you, he may find you in this state of being weary or burdened, or just realizing, like, man, I've tried. I've tried, and it's just not working for me, right? And my hope is, after today, 
If you find yourself in that place, struggling, that what you will realize is what you need is Jesus. And when you call on Him, the Bible says, something beautiful happens. Scripture tells us, and this is my favorite verse in the whole Bible, Scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.17, If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, and the new is here. The old has been put away. The new has arrived if we are in Christ. And today, I think for many of you, maybe you've come here realizing that God wants you to be that new creation, right? Right? But it's a struggle figuring out how do I do that each and every day? I mean, I know sometimes in my head, but how do I know in my heart? How will Jesus help me be a new creation? Well, I want you to know this about Jesus. This is not my line, it's been used elsewhere. But Jesus loves us too much to leave us alone the way we are, right? When you get introduced to Jesus, it should be transformative. It should change your life. When Jesus meets us, when he comes into our lives and becomes part of who we are and what we believe, he isn't going to just leave us as we were. If we become this new creation... Where then will Jesus take us? And that, of course, is a great question. And I want to mine and talk about that a little bit. What will Jesus help us become? If you're taking notes, the next one there. Jesus helps us to become more faithful. In fact, in Hebrews 12, 2, it says this. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus who is the author and perfecter of our faith. So, the one who gives us the faith is the one who helps us perfect our faith. He gives it to us and then he goes about the work of making it perfect in us. Will we reach perfection? Not on this side of the cross, folks. We're bogged down. We keep sinning. We keep failing. If you came here under false pretenses, we are all hypocrites. We are all sinners. This room, no perfect people allowed. If you think you're perfect, you're in the wrong place. But with Jesus, he's working on improving us. He's helping us to grow. Helping us to be more faithful. Romans 10, 17 says... So faith comes by hearing the word about Christ. Hearing God's word builds our faith. Let me read to you from Isaiah 40, 43. And as, as this is being read, feel your faith being built. Maybe you're having a faith trial right now. Hear these words of God. Isaiah 43 says this, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames, they will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Those of us who have believed in Jesus and have that new creation inside of us, when we hear those words, we should feel those words. They should help build our faith. And Jesus comes along with side of us and helps us to be more faithful as we dig into his word, as his word gets inside of us, as God's word begins to permeate our being. Jesus helps us to become more faithful. But it's a partnership. We provide the devotionals. We have our daily bread. There's lots of tools available. But we've got to pick up those tools. How, how crazy would it be to show up at a, a site where a group of guys were building a house and they had this amazing trailer full of tools, right? Every tool you could ever ask for. Every man's dream. 
And instead, they were standing inside where they were trying to build the house with no tools in their hands, no tool belts around their waists. And they had nails, and they were just like trying to force them into the wood. Some guy's over there trying to screw in a screw barehanded, right? Bite it with his teeth. You look at him like, you've lost your mind. And then you start filming it on your phone, of course. They have all these tools. Why aren't they using them? Well, we have all these tools to help build up our faith, to partner with God who wants His Word to dwell deeply within us. Why aren't we using them? So I would challenge you. Get into God's Word. Read it. Listen to it. If you're not a reader, get an audio Bible. If you don't have, want an audio Bible... The U version on your phone will literally read the Bible to you. Or go on YouTube. Listen to a song, a Christian song. Have it inspire you. Find ways to get God's Word in you. And if you do that, I promise you, Jesus will help you to be more faithful. The next thing, if you're taking notes there, Jesus will help us to become more joyful as well. Faithful and joyful. We actually see joy talked about in Scripture as a fruit of the Spirit, right? In Galatians 5, the Bible tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is love and that it's joy. And and you know that passage if you've been in church for long. But what are we talking about? I mean, it's kind of like an apple tree producing an apple, right? I mean, an apple tree produces an apple because it's an apple tree. It's not going to have to try any harder to produce an apple. That's what it does. But it can't also just squeeze out an apple whenever it decides. It takes some time. And that's the same way with us and our joy. Our joy comes from a right relationship with God. It's not something we can just produce on our own on command like that. Joy comes over time. And it takes work. That new creation that I was talking about, the Bible says that when we receive Christ, that God puts His Holy Spirit in us. It dwells within us. And that very same Spirit is the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And the fruit of that Spirit living in us is love and joy. But understand this. Joy... And happiness are not the same. I like to say it this way if you're taking notes. Happiness happiness depends on happenings. But joy depends on Jesus. Happiness depends on happenings. What's going on with me right now? That's going to determine whether or not I'm happy. If I don't like what's going on right now, sad face. It determines what's my state of happiness. But joy, on the other hand, joy is different. Joy comes from Jesus. That comes from down deep. That comes from something that's not a part of this world. Something that's placed inside of us by the living God, placed into us by His Spirit, into our spirit. And out of that overflow, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. And it comes out... And happiness depends on happenings, but joy depends on Jesus. And we see this in the Christmas story. Luke 2. You have the scripture where the angels, right? The angels come and they're proclaiming. The shepherds are out watching over their flocks at night, right? This is where I love the Charlie Brown version. I love the story. Linus gets up there and starts talking. And the Christmas story picks up in Luke 2 and the Bible says, But the angels said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy. Right? For who? Some of the people? Most of the people? No. Great news that will bring joy for all the people. Why? Because the angels say, Today in the town of David has been born to you 
the Savior. For all of us, a Savior has been born. And that should be cause of great joy. If you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can have joy. Maybe not happiness today, but joy. And He will also help you be more faithful. And the third one in that line is that Jesus helps us to become more triumphant, right? We talked about that a little bit to begin with in the song. Now, to feel more triumphant, sometimes we have to have another person in our life, someone who can help us feel that way, right? Because many times, like I talked about earlier, we can feel defeated. We don't always feel so triumphant. But here's the thing. Many times we don't realize who it is that has our back. Because it's the living God who has our back. We read in a, a prophecy about Jesus written hundreds of years before his birth out of Isaiah 9. You'll know this passage. It says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from time on and forever. That's pretty triumphant, right? He's going to rule and reign forever. Woohoo, our team wins. We can point and go scoreboard. Right? The scripture is prophesying about a little baby born today in a manger scene. And we look at those little porcelain figures, right? Lit, sitting there in that little pristine environment on our shelves or at your home. But please understand, it's so much more than that. When you look at that manger scene, let it remind you. Please understand that that little baby that lays there in the manger, he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the author of life. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the one who spoke everything into existence. He is the bread of life. He is our salvation. He's the lifter of our head. And as the song says, He is born the King of Angels. Come, let us adore Him. For He is Christ the Lord. When you hear that song, when you're singing it, that sounds pretty triumphant. We have to understand who fights with us and who it is fighting for us. My prayer is that you will hear this truth that's been ringing throughout the ages through this wonderful set of lyrics. Yes, it is, O come, all ye faithful. Come so that you can be joyful and triumphant. But most importantly, come. Come to Jesus. Come to Bethlehem and see a newborn king. Come and let us adore him. For he is Christ the Lord. As you go through the rest of this Christmas season, there's a lot that's going to be trying to distract us. There's a lot that's going to be trying to suck the joy away from us. Maybe we've got things going on in our lives right now causing us to struggle, causing us pain, causing us to doubt. But don't lose focus that Jesus is with you and that Jesus is for you and that Jesus wins. 
He came to the earth to be Emmanuel, God in the flesh with us, to show us how much he loves us, each and every one of us, even when we sometimes don't feel it. And if that's true, and I do fully believe and know it is, then when this world tries to drag you down, say, no, I am a new creation. I'm putting the old behind me. I'm moving forward with Jesus. We're moving on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul, praise the Lord. So come, all ye faithful. Amen.